A woman beaten and kidnapped from her southeast home tonight. Her family recounts the horror ordeal to Nine News. Paramedics under pressure. The record number of patients flocking to Queensland emergency departments. Prince Harry's payday. The royals striking a million dollar defamation deal. The local suburbs where rent is predicted to skyrocket more than $300 a week. How you could get paid if your flight is delayed. And we're one-on-one -on -one with Barbie as the Aussie Oscars kicks off on the Gold Coast. This is Nine News Queensland with Mia Glover. Good evening. The family of a woman who police say was beaten and kidnapped from her home on Brisbane's south side have been left shaken and scared. Today recounting the horror ordeal to Nine News. Two young men have now been charged over the alleged attack while another two tonight remain on the run. Instead of celebrating Lunar New Year, this Forest Lake family is recovering from an afternoon of terror. Yeah, very scary. Bit luck uh, for my family. Van Lu at the shops when police say his daughter was taken from her Dulandella home. Police know that a, a vehicle, uh, which is a, a stolen Audi, has attended that address um, containing four men. Alleging at least two were armed, one with a knife, the other with a gun. Police say the 43-year-old woman was robbed, assaulted, put in a car and driven to her parents' place just 10 minutes away. At that location, Forest Lake, uh, they discharged a firearm at least once. Uh, that's gone into a vehicle. Van says his daughter made a dash for safety. She ran inside, yep. locked in the bathroom. Yeah. And then very soon the two men went yes, and they left. Maybe they can, uh, up From there, police say the group made a swift exit. Specialist officers moving in, making sure the street was safe before paramedics whisked the woman away to hospital. But you could obviously understand they should be significantly shaken and traumatised by those events. We don't believe they knew each other. Only nine news cameras rolling as police visited a Stafford Heights address a short time later, taking four people into custody. Of uh, those four male persons, two have now been charged with a, a, a string of offences. Eric Barry Rock and Patrice Tower are both charged with kidnapping, torture and extortion. Very briefly. And how are they doing? Um, pretty stressed at the moment, but yeah, they're all right. Both men, aged just 18 and 20, tonight remain in custody. Their matters heard in court for the first time today. Both adjourned to later dates. Well, there's no indication that it's gang-related at this stage. As for the others who were taken into custody... Uh, two of those males who were uh, at the Stafford address who were initially taken into custody have since been released uh, and are assisting police uh, with their inquiries. The timeline thickening for investigators last night, a car exploding into flames on a Polara street... <laughs> Police say this burnt-out husk of a vehicle is the stolen Audi used by the alleged attackers earlier in the day. Let's go live to Lily Greer, who's at the Mary Street Police Station for us tonight. Lily, evening to you. The police are still on the hunt for two others. Yeah, that's right, Mia. Tonight, police really are ramping up their investigation. We had this update from them just a short while ago. They tell us they are now looking for two other people they believe could help them with their investigation into this alleged assault. Two people they say were last seen at that second address in Forest Lakes. They have been described to police as being over six foot tall, having dark complexions, wearing black hoodies and face masks. Police say... Uh, police allege, rather, this was a targeted attack. And tonight they are investigating whether or not the motivation was financial. Mayor, tonight police are asking members of the public, anyone with relevant dash cam or security vision to come forward. And in some good news, we are told this woman has now been discharged from hospital. That is good news, Lily. Thank you. A baby is being treated in hospital tonight after a shocking crime in Ipswich. Josh Babbis is live at the Queensland Children's Hospital. Josh, evening to you. A 26-year-old woman has been charged with attempted murder. Mia, that's right. A three-month-old baby is in a critical condition in the Queensland Children's Hospital. It's suffering a stab wound to its chest. Police found it in that condition when they attended a home in Ripley in Ipswich early this morning. They say when they went there, they administered first aid to that very small child uh, before it was rushed to hospital. A 26-year-old woman who was at the address was taken into police custody and this afternoon charged with one count of attempted murder. She'll face the Ipswich Magistrates Court on Monday.
Police say it was a call to, to emergency services that a wounding had occurred at that home as to why they first attended at 5.30 in the morning. Investigators spent most of their day combing through the property. We know, Mia, that the staff here at the Queensland Children's Hospital will be doing their utmost to help that little one tonight. Yeah, they certainly will. Josh, thank you. South East Queensland's new satellite hospitals are almost all online in the government's bid to ease pressure on our emergency departments. New data shows a record number of patients are flocking to our EDs, keeping paramedics under enormous strain. Two years and one Premier ago, this vacant block at Eight Mile Plains was earmarked to bring relief to the ailing health system. Now it's almost ready. The service should be opening in late May, which is very exciting. Five satellite hospitals have opened so far and the state government's hailing them a success given the tens of thousands of patients who've attended. Well, 28,000 people can't be wrong, Josh. They are voting with their feet. They love these satellite hospitals. I have said it before, do not go to a satellite hospital if you have chest pain, if your child's having an asthma attack. There are no overnight beds and you're wasting valuable critical time. New December quarterly data shows a record number of patients presented to emergency rooms across the state in three months, up almost 9,000 on last year. In the last three months of last year, we had heat waves, natural disasters, increasing COVID cases. But as for ramping, the percentage of patients being transferred off an ambulance stretcher at a hospital within 30 minutes has basically remained the same compared to the previous quarter. You only have to look at any one of the EDs every day of the week uh, with their ambulance ramping. Despite the huge pressure and demand, they're doing incredibly well. Only about 60% of the people that call triple zero end up in an emergency department and we're looking for alternate referral pathways for the other 40%. This is one of two of the last satellite hospitals yet to be completed. They're on track to be finished well before the election, adding much needed capacity in the outer suburbs. An extra $4 million has been allocated to add 27 new clinicians across all seven sites. Josh Bavis, Nine News. A crime scene has been declared on a beach south of Mackay Harbour after a group of mates four-wheel driving discovered a body wrapped in plastic in an abandoned car. Police have since closed off a dirt road and forensic crews are combing the scene. Investigations are ongoing. An early morning ram raid has left a small Gold Coast community rattled. Security at the Jacobs Well Estate attempting to stop thieves in a stolen car from breaking into homes, resulting in a frightening car chase. A quiet Saturday morning in Calypso Bay, this white four-wheel drive is spotted scoping out the estate's streets. So about 4.50, we had some, some people in a, um, a, a white Toyota Land Cruiser going from, from house to house, to, trying to look at um, a house to break into and, um, yeah, security got wind of it. The security guard cornered the Land Cruiser on this street when a dramatic chase ensued. The vehicles then going off-road to an adjacent paddock when things took a turn. The assailants tried to ram the security guard and security car. The Toyota then takes off, but not before the would-be thieves managed to deal one final blow. As they were coming out, they rammed the security hut here, um, thinking there might be a security guard in there. Uh, obviously, thank God there wasn't. Smashing into the security office, not once, but twice, leaving behind a trail of damage, shattered windows and broken panels. The tight-knit Calypso Bay community left to clean up the mess and it's not the first time. David Zugan setting up a neighbourhood watch two years ago to keep the community safe and secure. Residents forced to take matters into their own hands. And we've got these violent criminals going around and, and our government's doing absolutely nothing. And it's, it's an absolute joke and so we're on our own so we've got to defend ourselves. Simple as that. CCTV is playing a key role in police investigations. Anyone with information is urged to come forward. McKenna Bailey, Nine News. The state government says it stands ready to provide extra resources to police and other agencies struggling to combat Queensland's youth crime crisis. Frontbencher Shannon Fentiman today stating the issue is about much more than a police response, but that the government is committed to helping where needed and we'll do whatever it takes to make sure all of our agencies are well resourced to you know, intervene with these young people, to keep eyes on these young people and make sure that there are consequences for them when they do commit you know, such horrific acts that we've seen. They're just going to throw money at it. 
That is their answer. Whatever the police want. They don't just want money, they want resources. They want more police on the beat, not less. It comes following a horror week of youth crime in the state's southeast. A 16-year-old boy accused of murdering Ipswich grandmother Violene White in a shopping centre car park. A dispute is brewing tonight between the car industry and the federal government over new fuel efficiency standards. Car makers fear they'll be forced to pay billions of dollars in fines and pass costs on to consumers, a claim rejected by Labor. After a week of road testing a new plan to drive gas-guzzling vehicles out of Australia, the minister keen to bypass cost concerns. The time for these sort of silly scare campaigns is over. New fuel efficiency standards to be introduced next year would cap the average carbon emissions across a manufacturer's yearly fleet with penalties if they fail to meet the targets, forcing them to send cleaner models into the Aussie market, saving motorists at the Bowser. Australians deserve better choices of better cars. But the peak body for car makers warns if the high number of utes and four-wheel drives sold last year is repeated, $38 billion in fines would be racked up over five years. The magnitude of the penalties is so high that they cannot be absorbed by the car companies, so they'll have to be transferred to consumers. If you are going to lump that much cost on the industry, prices are going to go up. The analysis fails to account for accelerating EV demand, the government's numbers telling a different story. So there's no model available in Australia that would be more expensive after these efficiency standards are introduced. None. Chris Bowen is the dodgiest car salesman Australia has ever seen. Companies will have to increase supply of hybrids and electric cars or trade credits with overachieving dealers to sneak under the cap. We expect to make nothing because we expect the manufacturers to comply with the law. The policy catches Australia up to global standards. The industry says it's not opposed to the transition itself but the speed the government is aiming for. It's not our fault and it's certainly not consumers' fault that this hasn't been implemented earlier, but who's going to pay? Consumers will pay. Eliza Edwards, Nine News. New data shows Queensland has largely sweltered through the last 12 months, with a number of temperature records broken across 2023. Straight to weather expert Luke Bradnam. Luke, evening to you. Where did we feel the heat? Hey, g'day, Mia. Well, the data today released from the Bureau suggests that across the entire state we felt that heat. All up, our seventh warmest year on record was season 23, and uh, on average around 1.4 degrees above average uh, temps for all Queenslanders. Now, as you mentioned, six individual records broken last year, including for Redcliffe, who endured their warmest night on record, that uh, mercury only dropping to 27.5 degrees. Winton, warmest day on record, getting up to 40 uh, 7.4 degrees and also Coconut Island enjoying their warmest day on record. Now the long range forecast for August has been released and it suggests the heat is set to continue but with below average rainfall Mia that's not the case today here on the Gold Coast uh, showers around all day but how's it shaping up for the rest of the weekend I'll have all those details of full weather wrap coming up a little later. Yeah it's been a rainy day Luke we'll see you then thank you. Israel is planning a massive operation in the southern Gaza city of Rafah. Tonight, with nowhere left to go, hundreds of thousands of Palestinians are instead being ordered to evacuate ahead of a ground assault targeting Hamas. In Rafah, the last remaining refuge. The injured are rushed to hospital following a barrage of Israeli bombs. These are the people who fled fighting, coming to Gaza's southernmost town, which is now bursting at the seams. Civilians trying to go about their daily business, baking bread and doing laundry. Families who once had homes sleeping in tents set up in makeshift campsites, and now they face being moved. Our security and the prospects of peace in the Middle East depend on one thing, total victory over Hamas. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has ordered his military to devise a plan to evacuate people so troops can move in to defeat what they say is the last stronghold of Hamas fighters. I will die here. Where else would I go, this woman says. We are extremely worried about the fate of civilians. The unprecedented density of Rafa's population make it nearly impossible to protect civilians uh, in the event of ground attacks. 
Located on the Egyptian border, Rafah usually has a population of about 280,000. But according to the United Nations, it is now home to some 1.4 million people. 600,000 of those are children. The United Nations warning an attack would be catastrophic. It is nearly impossible for us to protect them from tank fire, from artillery shells uh, and so on. And because we, we all see what is going on currently. Israel says it is aware of all the international concerns and mission challenges, but that it is committed to completing this task. Matt Canellan, Nine News. Independent candidates backed by former Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan have won the most seats in the country's general election. Khan claimed victory from his prison cell, releasing a speech made by artificial intelligence. It's not clear yet which political party will be able to form a coalition government. Prince Harry has reached what his lawyers say is a substantial financial settlement against Britain's Daily Mirror newspaper group over hacking claims. With the legal battle now over, the Royal took a swipe at the newspaper's former editor, Piers Morgan. The Duke of Sussex wasn't in London for the hearing. After his flying visit a few days ago to see his cancer-stricken father, he was the surprise guest at a Gridiron Awards show in Las Vegas. That's Prince Harry. But the Prince, too, was a winner after taking on the Mirror Group newspapers. His lawyer outside the UK High Court reading a statement from Harry. We have uncovered and proved the shockingly dishonest way in which the Mirror acted for so many years and then sought to conceal the truth. The Prince became the first royal to give evidence in court in over a century when he sued the Mirror over hacking claims. The court in December ruled in his favour over some of his allegations and now the publisher has agreed to reach settlement over remaining articles. Harry awarded an undisclosed sum. His lawyer describes it as substantial. The Mirror Group releasing a statement saying, where historical wrongdoing took place, we apologise unreservedly and have taken full responsibility and paid compensation. A former editor of the Mirror during the period in question was Piers Morgan, who's vehemently denied any involvement in phone hacking. But today he was singled out for attack by Prince Harry through his lawyer. Morgan's response? Invading the privacy of the royal family is utterly reprehensible. And on that I share Prince Harry's opinion. I just wish he'd stop doing it. In London, Brett McLeod, Nine News. Star spotting on the Gold Coast. All the glitz and glam from the red carpet as the Aussie Oscars gets underway. Months in the making, a new green bridge opens in Brisbane. A convoy of modern day gladiators roll into Rome demanding tax breaks. And saving babies at the end of sport, the Australian test that can detect life threatening infections in newborns. The Gold Coast is hosting Hollywood Royalty tonight for the Actor Awards, celebrating the best and brightest of Australian cinema. Abby Gearin's been on the red carpet this afternoon for us. Abby, evening to you. You've been rubbing shoulders with the stars. How good? <laughs> I am feeling a little starstruck, Mia. The Australian Academy of Cinema and Television Arts Awards, hosted by the one and only Rebel Wilson, have gotten underway here at Hotter in Surfers Paradise this evening. And everyone here is telling me that this is like one big catch-up for the local film industry. So I think it'll be a pretty big night ahead. Earlier on the red carpet, that was a chance for us to check out all the international talent that's travelled to Queensland for this event. And, of course, we were particularly excited to spot one Barbie star. It's safe to say... Margot Robbie was the guest of honour. Putting the sparkle on the glitter strip, homegrown Hollywood star Margot Robbie returning to her roots. You know, sometimes you're just sitting alone in a hotel room being like, oh, yay, and you just want to share it with your friends and family, and tonight I get to share this with my friends and family. Tonight they'll all have plenty to celebrate. The Barbie actress honoured with an actor trailblazer prize before she heads to the US for the Oscars. So we've got the nominees luncheon on Monday in LA, so that will be very, very special, and um, I've never, yeah, I've been nominated as a producer before, which feels like a huge step in my career. No shortage of international star power has turned out for Australia's answer to the prestigious Cinematic Awards. Kate Blanchett nominated for Best Actress for her role in The New Boy. Australians have always punched above their weight um, internationally, and tonight's a reminder of that. Hit comedy, Colin from a 
accounts receiving 10 nominations. Still, you can't get ahead of yourself. Well, we've already lost four at the technical awards, so yeah. we're feeling like a, like a good amount of humbled. This is the first of three years the awards will be held here on the Gold Coast, recognising the city's growing reputation as a filmmaking hub. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's hard not to love it here. It's just absolutely stunning. It, and we're just having a ball. We, we've only been here for a couple of days, but it's just a beautiful place to be. Once you get a taste of the Gold Coast, well, yeah, I like that song, Hotel California. You can check in any time you like, but you can't ever leave. Abby Guerin, Nine News. <laughs> well, a new green bridge has opened at Breakfast Creek after more than a year under construction. It's the first of its kind to be delivered under the council's city shaping program, with more than 2,000 residents expected to use it on a daily basis. This is a project that has been 18 months in the making. Uh, the project has come in $7 million under budget. It is a tiny bridge over a creek and it's cost $80 million. I mean, this is the most... This is the most incredible waste of money. There was already a path that crossed Breakfast Creek. Kangaroo Point Green Bridge will open later this year. No stranger to a fight, Rome's Colosseum has become the latest battleground for a clash between farmers and the government. A convoy of tractors escorted by police staged a protest by the historic landmark, demanding action by authorities on low produce prices and rising costs. Italy's Prime Minister responded by saying the government will partially reintroduce a tax break for farmers. Get paid for delays. Tonight, the new push for major airlines to compensate customers if their flight's running behind schedule. How our leaders think it could help clean up Australia's travel industry, that story's ahead. Rising rental costs. We reveal the suburbs where payments could go up by more than $300 a week. A fiery emergency on a busy motorway as a small plane comes crashing down. Plus the warning to expectant mothers who catch COVID-19. Rental prices are already putting pressure on household budgets, but if the latest projections are to be believed, well, it's about to get a whole lot worse. Units in many suburbs forecast to go up by more than 40% by the end of the year. Renters in some areas to pay upwards of $1,000 a week. A sign of the times. More than 70 booked in to inspect this one-bedroom apartment in South Brisbane. Dozens more making their way through this unit in St Lucia. There were too many people actually uh, looking for their places. We mean 1% of available stock is available to rent any given time and that's, a, and that's statewide. Uh, we've never seen that before. According to the latest projections from real estate research group Suburb Trends, it's not going to get better any time soon. Units in Mermaid Waters and Broadbeach on the Gold Coast could rise by more than $300 a week by the end of the year, eclipsing the $1,000 mark. While in Brisbane, suburbs including Paddington, Tawong and St Lucia are due to see rents increase by more than $240 a week. For those looking for a rental, it's a tough pill to swallow. Well, it doesn't sound really reassuring. It's not good for uh, your average poor student. While the current rental prices are still within reach for many of those looking, some are concerned that further increases could see them pushed out. I love this suburb, but if rental expenses are going to get much higher, I prefer to move. This week, the state government announced a $160 million renters' relief package aimed at providing more financial aid for those who need it. But there's fears moves to a new code of conduct, including the banning of rent bidding, will just be a band-aid on a bullet wound. Not enough social housing has been built to house those most vulnerable, so those people are now competing in the private rental market. Jacob Funk, Nine News. Two people have died after a twin-engine plane crashed onto a Florida freeway while attempting to make an emergency landing. The jet, which was unable to reach the airport safely, clipping a wall and hitting a truck before bursting into flames. Three people survived the crash. Investigators are tonight trying to figure out what went wrong. Contracting COVID-19 during pregnancy could lead to complications for expectant mothers, a UQ study has found. Researchers finding the virus can cause DNA changes in the placenta, increasing the likelihood of preeclampsia, stillbirth or preterm birth. The study compared the tissue from the placenta of unvaccinated women who were tested positive for the virus and those who had not been vaccinated 
or infected. Super Bowl spending soars. We reveal the staggering amount fans are forking out for a ticket to America's biggest sporting event. The push to compensate passengers for flight delays. The pregnancy emergency that brought a pink concert to a halt. And a favourite Aussie treat makes a return to supermarket shelves. Sin City is becoming a sporting mecca with the very first Super Bowl to be held in Las Vegas just two days away. Even by Vegas standards, the prices are extraordinary. A seat setting back fans some $14,000. Sin City meet the Super Bowl. The Las Vegas Strip chock-a-block with football fanatics. Bucket list. It's, I mean, NFL, famous in, um, in Australia, of course, but we're, more, but we're more rugby league people, but, I mean, who could pass it up? Uh, the atmosphere, I think, yeah, it's something that we want to experience in Australia. The big game is two sleeps away. Those with tickets are counting down. How long ago did you get a ticket? Uh, we got them a couple months back, so we've been preparing for this. <laughs> and those who want tickets are counting the cost. Do you have tickets for me? I wish I had tickets. They're so expensive. They are super high. In fact, the average price for a seat at the Super Bowl is $14,000. For those with serious cash to splash, a 20-person suite is a cool $2.8 million. Oh, it's crazy. It's crazy. Now, is it because of Taylor Swift's there or what? I don't know, but I know it's higher than before. During the regular season, after a first appearance at Arrowhead Stadium, in that first 24-hour period, we saw a massive increase in both sales. The Super Bowl has been given the Las Vegas touch. Come game day, one in four Americans is planning to place a bet on the country's biggest game. It's a record number, but one that isn't out of place here in Sin City. And that includes gambling on Taylor Swift. Who will she sit with? How many times will she appear on the broadcast? Could her footballer boyfriend, Travis Kelsey, propose? We want to make sure that people know that whether they're football fans, whether they're Taylor fans, they're all welcomed here. One thing's for sure, come game day, both teams will be going all in. In Las Vegas, Lauren Tamazi, Nine News. Pink's Sydney concert came to a sudden halt when a pregnant woman in the mosh pit thought she'd gone into labour. The woman was assessed by paramedics who discovered it was a false alarm. I feel like we're all, we shouldn't be looking. Everyone give her a privacy. She didn't just have the baby, right? Is the baby here? No. Okay. She's got to have it. Congratulations. <laughs> Imagine that. The Grammy winner's second concert is on tonight. The return of the Polly Waffle is finally happening, although not quite how fans might have expected. The chocolate treat will hit the shelves again in April, not as a bar, but as a packet of bite-sized balls. South Australian company Roeburn Men's bought the rights to make the iconic treat back in 2019, a decade after it had been discontinued. But the cost and complexities of manufacturing the treat turned out to be higher than first thought. The Polly Waffle bar won't be coming back. The Polly Waffle Bite will be made available to Australians and we're really excited about bringing back the flavours. It'll still be delicious, I'm sure. They'll be on sale from early April. Still ahead, a Brisbane heat star will be unleashed against the Windies in his debut international on home soil. Who's in line to travel to Vegas with the Broncos after today's first trial against the Seagulls? At the end of sport, the breakthrough test that can detect a potentially deadly infection in newborns. And scattered light showers around the southeast this evening. They have stopped for the moment here at Main Beach. Only a slight reprieve, though. More showers in the forecast. All the details coming up soon. A sublime performance from Tristan Saylor has seen the Broncos narrowly avoid being upset by winner Manly in the opening trial game. Saylor's starring role coming from the bench creating a welcome selection headache ahead of Brisbane's NRL season opener. Standing room only on Brisbane's Bayside for a taste of footy in February. Reese Walsh needing a security escort. With their stars being rested and only there to watch, the Broncos fielded a youthful team that faced a stern test against Queensland Cup club winner Manly. Ball back inside, try time, over he goes. Even with nine players with NRL experience in their squad, Brisbane found themselves trailing 10-0 early on. 
cut out ball, try in the corner. Dean Mariner's uncertainty under the high ball, more cause for concern for the visiting Broncos. The injection of Tristan Saylor off the bench gave Brisbane some much needed direction. He's perfectly placed, cut out pass, put them on the board. Saylor then backed it up with a second try assist two minutes later. Oh, he flies through the air there, there's Carapani. Losing a player to the sin bin halted the Broncos' resurgence as the Seagulls eyed off an unlikely victory, leading 16-8. Another bit of brilliance from Saylor showcasing his deft kicking ability set up a grandstand finish. The Broncos' fullback ensured his side avoided a massive upset, sealing the 26-16 win all by himself. Yeah, I guess every opportunity is a great opportunity to push for that, and um, the 17 is where I want to be, so it's good to... Um, I guess have a few try involvements, but yeah, coming on after 25, it's hard, so you sort of just want to inject yourself, and that's what I try to do. There's different ways you can sort of bring him into the squad. We have spoken about that with Tristan and ways that we can use him, you know, at the next level. Adam Jackson, Nine News. For more on the Broncos' performance, we go live to Cougarai Oval. Ben Dolben is there. Dobbo, which player put his hand up to make that starting 17 in Vegas? Yeah, g'day, Dom. Well, there is a spot on the bench in the middle for a forward, and Xavier Willison this afternoon put his hand up. He was brutal in defence and very strong with the ball. I caught up with Matt Ballon, the assistant coach for the Broncos. This is what he had to say about his performance. Xavier was good. You know, the, Kevy just said before the game, simple things, strong defence, carry the ball hard, um, and Xavier did that. So there's a couple of other guys, you know, Bailey Butler was good in the front row, um, and they just, they just worked hard, and that's what we're looking for. He really put a case forward and obviously another trial next week. We'll see him get more game time. Their trials continue though, Dom, tonight in Rockhampton. The Dolphins, they start their season against the CQ Capras. Cheers, Dobbo, and great to see a bumper crowd out there. Brisbane Heat left arm quick Spencer Johnson has earned a call up to Australia's T20 squad and will mark his first home international at Adelaide Oval. While David Warner showed he's still on top of his game in the Aussies' series opening win over the West Indies. David Warner arriving in Adelaide after some heroics in Hobart. Oh, to the leg stump, and that was always going to disappear from Warner. The opener blasting 70 from 36 balls in his first international match since retiring from Test and 50 over cricket last month. I feel refreshed, uh, a lot of energy. The guys have told me to settle down a little bit. The innings in his 100th game proving Warner is still one of Australia's most dangerous weapons in the shortest format ahead of June's World Cup. I'm pumped. I, I, I said I wanted to play the, the 2020 World Cup and finish there and look, I'm excited and it's a, it's a good little journey that we've got going now through the next six months. Warner's knock helped the Aussies to a huge 7 for 213, which looked under threat as the West Indies reached 89 without loss before Adam Zampa stepped in. Oh, opens up the stumps, smashes it, out! The leg spinner taking 3 for 26. Hey! Roger bombs him, Zampa's so good! The Windies falling 11 runs short. The ability to keep taking wickets through the middle there was, was really important to the win in the end. Victory tomorrow will wrap up the series with a game to spare. Fast bowler Spencer Johnson will play his first international match on Australian soil at his home ground. It's a pinch yourself moment. It's, I'm just sort of taking it in my stride. Luke Doversy, Nine News. The Australian women clearly have a point to prove after their historic ODI loss to South Africa, posting 277 in the third one day. Beth Mooney anchored the innings with an unbeaten 82, supported by a half century from captain Alyssa Healy. Dual Olympian Peter Bowl has described Australia's support as a love story after being falsely accused of being a drug cheat, only to be cleared six months later. The 29-year-old wants to repay that faith at the Paris Olympics and believes he now has an edge over his rivals. Mentally, I'm probably the strongest at the moment and um, the physical part, we kind of work up to it. I always say the best, the best races you ever run is when you're free. Unfortunately, an injury has ruled Bowl out of races in Melbourne next week. The founder of the Enhanced Games, where competitors will the be allowed to take performance-enhancing drugs, has defended the concept. Businessman Aaron D'Souza claims many athletes are already doping secretly. We're taking what is obviously being done by a huge number of athletes, particularly medalists and winners, and doing it all out in the open honestly and safely under good, high-quality clinical supervision. 
James Magnuson is coming out of retirement to compete in the controversial event in an attempt to swim faster than a world record and earn $1 million in prize money. The Bullets are on the cusp of ending their five-year playoff drought in the NBL thanks to a remarkable shooting display from Nathan Sobey. A career-high 37-point haul from the veteran guard propelling Brisbane to a vital 102-84 victory over the Adelaide 36ers at Nissan Arena. The Bullets will seal a playoff berth if they beat the New Zealand Breakers on Friday. Sensational Sobey should be on his playing kit, Mia. I like that. Sensational Sobey. Yep. And delicious Dommy. <laughs> It's a bit girl. weird, but sure. <laughs> Thanks, Tommy. Well, there's a breakthrough tonight in efforts to stop a severe infection being passed from mothers to their newborn babies. A world-first rapid antigen-style test is about to be trialled here in Australia, cutting detection time to just minutes. It's a mother's worst nightmare, unknowingly passing an infection on to her newborn child. So it can have quite a significant impact if it is not diagnosed in a timely manner. While not harmful to expected mums, Group B Streptococcus is a bacteria that one in four women carry. In the rare cases it's transferred to babies during labour, it can cause serious health problems and even stillbirths. The baby can get neonatal meningitis, it can get sepsis or pneumonia, so the importance of detecting it and then eradicating it can't really be understated. If found, the infection can be be easily treated with antibiotics. Tests are available late in pregnancy between 36 and 38 weeks, but the results take up to seven days. Anything we can do to detect it uh, more quickly, more easily, and give the antibiotics to the women who need it is going to be a good thing. Tonight, scientists have found a faster way to detect Group B strep using a rapid antigen style test familiar to anyone who's had COVID symptoms, giving results within minutes and would be available at your GP. You can test the mother on demand as and when needed. That's the biggest benefit we see coming out from this test. The method is about to be put to the test as a three-year trial begins, starting with $3 million in federal funding. We thought this was a really important and practical way to invest in some new technology that can help save lives. It's hoped once the trial is complete, the test will be approved for use in Australia and exported around the world. Eliza Edwards, Nine News. In just three minutes, the fresh push for airlines to pay passengers if their flights delayed. The compensation scheme to force major carriers to honour its obligations to travellers. How it will all work? Well, that story is just moments away. Luke Bradham's here now with a look at the weather. And Lukey, where have we seen the heavier showers today? I mean, in the southeast, been down here on the Gold Coast, just shy of 10 millimetres since 9am this morning. Most areas along the coastal fringe seeing a few millimetres today. Lighter falls forecast for our Sunday. I'll have all the details coming up next. There's a push tonight for major airlines to be held accountable for delayed or cancelled flights. A bill which is being tabled in Parliament could force operators to compensate passengers if they don't deliver. Long lines, cancellations and lengthy delays. Australians are increasingly dissatisfied with our airlines. We've had some that's been absolutely shocking. We flew with... Um... <laughs> Jet star on the way here and only half an hour before our flight they let us know it was delayed. Now the coalition wants to force carriers to compensate passengers. The cancellation and delays are going in the wrong direction, not the right direction. And so if they need a big stick to help them get with the program, well so be it. The pay on delay bill will tie passengers to a flight, destination and time. They'll be compensated for delays, a move that's already up and running in the European Union. And it's happening because airlines think they can get away with it. But the big question is, will this push up prices for airline tickets? The Federal Transport Minister, Catherine King, has repeatedly referred to the need for increased consumer protections. A spokesperson says this has been included in the term of reference for the aviation white paper. In the past, the minister has said, I do say really clearly, airlines need to do better when it comes to Australian consumers. I have been highly critical of Qantas for some time in relation to a range of issues. They need to 
to do better. So if the government's not going to act, it will be up to the Senate to actually take action on this. The latest report card shows around 69% of Qantas network departures were on time, 62% at Jetstar, while in the Virgin Australia network, just over 56% of flights left on time. It would be a great incentive to have your money back. Virgin Australia says it takes customer service and its consumer law obligations seriously. Qantas says it has significantly reduced delays and cancellations. Similar compensation schemes overseas have not led to improvement in airline reliability. Vicky Jardim, Nine News. Luke Bradnam is back now with a full weather forecast from Main Beach on the Goldie. Luke, it was so rainy and cool today. Where's the rain going to stop? Come on. <laughs> Yeah, you're going to like the seven-day outlook. There's a little bit more sunshine heading our way for the week ahead, but you're not wrong about those cool temps around the southeast today. In the city, our oh, coolest day of the year so far, all courtesy of that cloud cover. The sun just didn't have a chance to get out today, and uh, we saw uh, falls of up to 10 millimetres down here on the Gold Coast. City's seen around 5 millimetres, but below average temps for the Gold Coast today, as well as the city, uh, back up to average tomorrow. I'll show you that in just a moment. Have a look at those temperatures today from around the southeast 26 degrees was the top down here on the Gold Coast. That was the top for the city as well. A little bit warmer in the west, uh, just seeing a bit more patchy sunshine around the southeast. The Sunshine Coast getting up to 29 degrees, as did Ipswich and uh, warmer temps on the way tomorrow. If you look at tomorrow's weather map, showers and storms again for the northern tropics, extending through the west of our state and onshore winds again. Uh, we'll push showers up the New South Wales coast and also parts of the Queensland coast and uh, keep up uh, the, the high will keep most of the south of the country dry. So if you're heading into state tomorrow, a possible shower on the way for Sydney. Hot and sunny for Melbourne, though up over 30 degrees, both Melbourne and Adelaide. Perth tomorrow, a bit of a scorcher, getting up to 35 degrees. And for you in Darwin, a shower, possible storm and a top of 31 degrees. Now back home, mostly sunny for Cairns tomorrow, but we could see a light shower, only a couple of millimetres in it for both Townsville and also Mackay. And then in the west, mostly sunny for the Isa. A possible shower and storm for Longreach though, but finding up further south through the interior for Roma. A partly cloudy day on the way for Rocky, but further south through the Capricornia coast, could see a light shower for Gladstone. And then through the uh, Fraser coast tomorrow, could see a couple of millimetres, most likely from late morning into the afternoon, extending from Bundaberg right the way through to Gympie, with those temperatures a tad warmer than what we saw today, up in the low 30s for most areas. Here in the southeast, pretty similar to what we saw today, patchy light showers, particularly along the coastal fringe. Those temperatures getting up to 29 degrees along the coast. Ipswich tomorrow getting up to 31 and southeasterly winds quite strong again tomorrow. Out on the bay we'll see seas getting up to one and a half metres, two metres offshore and keep an eye out. King tides on offer again tomorrow so a lot of rips and currents in our waterways. For the city a top of 30 degrees for our Sunday and dropping down tonight to a pretty comfortable 22 and then looking ahead a light shower or two for Monday, partly cloudy for Tuesday and also Wednesday and then showers returning from Thursday. Feb switch a similar Outlook, shower or two for tomorrow and Monday and then partly cloudy for Tuesday and Wednesday. Here on the Gold Coast, a shower or two for Monday, partly cloudy, light winds for Tuesday and Wednesday and for the Sunshine Coast, could see up to 10 millimetres tomorrow, the heaviest of the showers around the southeast, and those temps up in the high 20s, early 30s most days. Let's check out the beaches for tomorrow. Well, not too much fun on the open beaches this morning. Those southerly winds kicking in super early. She was like a washing machine at Narrow Neck, but down on the southern point breaks, turning it on. Swell muscling up to around a metre plus of rolling through on the sets. And tomorrow we're expecting slightly bigger conditions. Here's the plan of attack. Whether you're up the sunny coast or down here on the Gold Coast, you have to hit the points if you're chasing a wave. And pretty much only for experienced board riders out there at the moment. There's a lot of rips and currents around with those massive tides we're experiencing. So take care if you're heading down there for a day at the beach. News are up on the sunny coast. A burly and rainbow down here on the Gold Coast give you a little bit of protection. Offshore for the boaties, not a lot of fun. They hit the estuaries. There's plenty of big dewies around at the moment. Ross McGovern, Lucky Strike Charters bagging out through the week. Great stuff.
I tell you what, guys, get your pots in the water. Heaps of sandies and muddies around. They love it after the rain that we've had. Me, a little bit more sunshine to look forward to for the week ahead. Oh, well, that's good to hear, Lukey. Thank you. You can come back. <laughs> well, that is Nine News Queensland for your Saturday. Thanks so much for your company. Deborah Knight is next with A Current Affair. I'm Mia Glover. From all of us here, good night, and we'll see you tomorrow.